Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are happy to be with you today. We are going to be talking, welcome to Plathville. Yes. We watched this yesterday. We watched it. I watched it again yeah. today. I have a lot of thoughts. Me I have too. a lot of feelings, Me none of too. which are repressed, a la Ethan and Kim. <laughs> For real. And I definitely want to get into it. But before we do, we have to issue a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize. And so if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party and talk about some fundamentalist Christians, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are cool and trashy like us and down to party, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. <gasps> Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. Okay. And if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget. We mean it. Yeah. Do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe yeah. because everything you do really helps us. By the way, we mentioned people just hitting share and then copying the link yeah. and doing nothing else. And I think we got like, I want to say 50% more viewers last week in the first day than yeah. we normally do yeah. for a busted ass season five <laughs> sister wives <laughs> episode. So if you wouldn't mind doing that again, just hit the share, copy the link. It really does help. And we thank you in advance. Thank you. Okay, before we get into the episode, I understand somebody called in on the good old speak pipe. And now, by the way, yeah. If you want to call us and sound off, and you don't have to agree with us, by the way. Yeah. You could be mad at us. You can. You could have a different opinion. We'd You're love wrong. to hear it. All you have to do <laughs> is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe, yeah. whatever it says right there. Uh -huh. I think you have 90 seconds. You can leave us a message. Say hi. Tell us what's up. We love to hear from you. It's free and you can be anonymous. Uh. So somebody called in about welcome to Plathville. Yeah, we got kind of an interesting speak pipe from a person named Claire and it's about Olivia motherfucking Plath. Oh God, are you going to be okay? <laughs> yeah. I'll All right. <laughs> Hi, Beatrice and Delia. This one of your listeners overseas in Brussels representing from far, far, far away. Um, so my question is about Olivia, of course. Controversial as she is, uh, I can't hope but like her sometimes and I'm torn because I don't know how I would have acted in her situation specific things like Mama Plath and the gravesite of course totally differently I would have handled that totally differently like no question um but if you were in her shoes how would you have approached growing out of that cult mentality and being part of a family where the parents fundamentally did not agree with who you were or you being part of their family at the end of the day. And while she was still in love with Ethan, how would you have handled him needing to be connected to his family while, I guess, distancing yourself in a mature, responsible way? So thank you. Great question. Yeah, very great. So do you want to answer first? No, you go first. Okay, so here's the thing. I have a lot of respect for Olivia's process of deprogramming and deconstructing. I think when she got married to Ethan, she was still 100% in the Borg. She was in the culty cult. But while she was married to Ethan, she started to pull away from her previous beliefs. However, mm -hmm. that was probably pretty taboo to do while she was embedded with the Plaths. And sure. so I believe Olivia when Olivia says that they said she had demons in her. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I believe Olivia when she says that they were very disapproving of who she was and her choices. And so I have a lot of compassion for Olivia. At the same time, I happen to believe that Olivia grew up, her childhood was essentially very toxic. Mm -hmm. We heard Lydia Grace say last year that Olivia was essentially an arm of her parents, was very manipulative, particularly with Lydia Grace. And so as she's waking up from her culty bullshit, she's also still engaging her innate toxic patterns. Oh, yeah. And so I think that she's trying to figure out both at the same time. And I think 
as she's trying to pull away, she's calling up the stuff that she knows and the stuff that she knows how to use from her, I guess, toxic childhood. Yeah. So I think as we go along, uh, what I'm hoping is that Olivia just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I think what we've seen so far in this season, she seems lighter. She seems happier. She seems more open. At least in the show, she doesn't seem like she's on such a campaign against Ethan or the Plaths, at least not yet. We're on episode three. Yeah. So she seems to be in a really good place. And so I hope she's facing those inner motivations that she has that I think are pretty dark Mm -hmm. and problematic. But I don't see that on social media because Mm -hmm. she's always blaming somebody else. Yeah. And she's always kind of trying to curate her own image so that she seems blameless. And she's also always pandering, in my opinion, to certain cults of personality and groupthink, and mm-hmm. I kind of clock that, but that is also a sign of immaturity. She's in process. I look at Olivia and I think this girl is in process. So I have a lot of respect for what she has done, and I think she has a lot of work still to do. Yeah. That's my position personally. What about you? I think that's fair. And I mean, I don't think that there's any like right or wrong way to like exit a cult or like deconstruct and deprogram yourself from this fundamentalist religion. So like I don't judge her or condemn her for her process in that and like how she may have messed up or said some dumb things or whatever. I think the issue I have with Olivia is that she kind of expected everyone else to kind of do it the same way she did because she felt like the way that she did it was right and that everyone else should follow with her because if they don't then they're still close-minded or whatever and then she put herself kind of like on this pedestal of like moral authority because she did leave this fundamentalist cult like oh I'm kind of better than everybody else because I'm more open-minded and progressive and that's where like I have the problem with that because everybody just everybody's journey is different and like you can't like force someone like Ethan who's so fucking stuck in his ways and so set in his beliefs and his political beliefs to come along with you Mm -hmm. and I know that's like painful that sucks like when your spouse doesn't want to come on this journey with you and so like I know she kind of had to grapple with that and like accept that as her reality but she still kind of tried to force him to go along right she employed those malignant tactics in her relationships and that's the part that is problematic yeah and then in terms of like how she handled her stuff with the plaths like i can't imagine like being marrying into a family and then changing as a person and then having your entire family completely disown you and say that you have demons in you like that fucking sucks of course obviously and And that's super isolating psychologically abusive of course 100 percent But like you can choose to completely separate yourself from that family without also expecting your husband to cut off all of the ties with that family as well. Like that was where my issue has always been with Olivia that she couldn't have grace for Ethan to try and figure out his own relationships with his family on his own because that's his family. That's his shit to deal with. She can separate herself in a healthy way and be like, I'm not going to be a part of them. I'm not going to interact with them. I don't want anything to do with them. And let Ethan do whatever he needs to do in his context. Yeah, but at the same time, you're dealing with literal kids whose brains aren't fully developed. And I think Olivia in this situation is probably being and or feeling Mm re-traumatized by this family. Totally. Like, we don't know what was happening with Kim and Barry and Olivia and Ethan before the show started. Like, if you listen to the way Olivia describes it, again, it was pretty psychologically and spiritually abusive toward her Mm -hmm. so I just feel uh, I don't know I just feel like she's growing up I feel like that's great I feel like Ethan is also growing up and one sentiment I see online quite a lot is like people just cheerleading for Olivia like she can do absolutely no wrong there's no nuanced conversations about how she might have participated in family dynamics whereas they can see no good in Ethan nothing and I think we see in this episode like case in point he is I think 
opening up to his yeah. own emotions. Yeah. He's admitting that he doesn't know how to feel, which I think is such a big deal. Yes. And we've actually talked about we this. We have. We think he does feel. He just doesn't know how to deal with his own emotions. Like yes. he's actually starting to address this. He's talking about family dynamics. He's talking about his mother and making these interesting connections. This is the kind of stuff that I, ro- I really want to see more of from Ethan and also from Olivia. Like I know you don't really want Olivia <laughs> on the show. You're like, you're redundant. Why are you here? Why are we going on your single? girl journey whereas i kind of like to see the aftermath of her pulling away the process of her deconstruction and also finding herself finding like a new normal i personally do think that that's interesting but i also want to see that for ethan Mm -hmm. and i feel really good seeing it for him and barry i agree yeah and even mariah well i mean mariah is not necessarily deconstructing she's going back to she is this faith but she is kind of changing yes her like whole personality even the way that she looks which is kind of interesting to see like compared to teenage mariah especially with like her little booty shorts and now she's like i want to be more modest for god it's like it's just interesting to see doesn't mean i necessarily agree with her her life choices and how she's handling all of this i just want to see more of that from all of them and i guess olivia it's just like (laughs) i think olivia and lydia grace's segments feel a little forced yeah they definitely feel produced they don't feel authentic to me and that's where i'm just like (sighs) snoring yeah and that's a problem that we're having across the board though Mm -hmm. i think the one person who's giving it the most authentically is probably ethan Mm -hmm. because he's copping to his depression he's singing a song about self-deletion i know and he's singing it on national television and in front of his family like that was so heavy we'll get there yeah in the conversation but i i think we're seeing a lot from ethan and i'd like to see more of that realness from olivia agreed but i personally and i say again i i think she's doing i think she's doing well i think she's deconstructing well but i think she's so intelligent and i think right now her intention is good and she's intelligent, smart, beautiful. She's yeah. making her own money. She's got her own business. I think the world is her oyster. Totally. As she's going to the bar in Scottsdale in that blazer, honey. As a realtor. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Selling Scottsdale realty. So crazy. Let's get into the episode. You ready? Yeah. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. What was her name again? Claire? Claire. Yes. Claire thank from you. from Brussels. Oh, my God. I feel international. international. An international raccoon. That's so awesome. Thank you for your feedback. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah. I mean, let's start at the beginning of the episode with olivia and lydia grace because we kind of start there in scottsdale arizona i used to live out there yes you did i'm kind of mad that lydia grace moves there when i move away from there because that would have been so cool if i could (laughs) have ran into olivia and lydia grace in public that would have been so awesome what would you have done you would have pulled out your monocle totally and just stared at them from a booth across (laughs) the way yeah and maybe worked up the courage to try and get a picture just so i could say I got to meet Olivia and Lydia. Oh my God. What a fan. I know. I'm so cringe. But anyway, so they're, Olivia is visiting Lydia Grace in Scottsdale. She just moved there post her breakup from her, (laughs) I was going to be really mean, jelly filled boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I'm sorry. And so you go to a gym for like two months and now nobody can say anything to you. Two months, seven months. Whatever. But like now all of a sudden you're the authority on how bodies should look. I feel very offended. I'm not. I feel very attacked. I'm just calling it as I see it. Nobody was. CJ? Yeah. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was. I mean, Lydia Grace could have done way better. So good for her. Okay. Um, They're single ladies. They're getting ready for a night on the town. I'm a single lady. And they're talking about like flirting and dating and Olivia's like, I don't know. I don't know know what to do. It's my first time going to the bar. It's my first time being single. I don't know what to do. Okay. And how do you feel about that, Beatrice? (laughs) It looks like you're feeling some kind of way. Well, I just am kind of questioning like when this was filmed because I'm pretty sure she's dating her boyfriend at this time. So it's like, I don't know if she's like faking this whole single thing or if she actually is just being awkward and like doesn't know what to do. Either way, I'm kind of cringing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, good for them. Like, yeah, have fun. They go out to the bar, which looks like a corporate place Uh for food and drinks. In Old Town, yeah. And they sit down and they're having conversations and they meet a couple of production men. <laughs> yeah, men exactly. Have been given probably a hundred dollars to go over there and talk to those two women <laughs> yeah. and introduce yourself and 
offer to buy them drinks. And I don't know what to think or feel because I was kind of bored. I guess it, it was, was very bored. somewhat interesting listening to the girls talk about their time in rural Virginia mm-hmm. where... Olivia lets us know that she spent nine years milking the cow Mm -hmm. versus Lydia Grace's one year. And so she really was kind of living the same sort of life as the Plath kids out on that farm, which I thought was interesting. I personally, even though Olivia refers to herself as awkward, I thought she was charming. I thought she was pretty. I thought she was classy in her realtor blazer. And... Go for it. More power to you, girls. Yeah, I mean, both of them are totally gorgeous. I thought it was weird how, like, Lydia Grace is making, like, insulting comments to Olivia, like, calling her awkward and weird and how she flirts. And Olivia gets a little, like, offended by it, but, like, plays it off like it's whatever. Like, we're just sisters. Yeah, I don't mind being awkward. Well, and as you watch Lydia Grace, when they're both being filmed in their interstitials or their talking heads, she's like never looking at Olivia. Mm -hmm. She's kind of always looking away with a stony face. And I'm like, Lydia Grace, do you even like your sister? That's what I'm thinking. I kind of feel like you don't necessarily like her. You just want to be on camera or you just want to be on the show. Right. And that's why I feel like their storylines are kind of forced and weird like i i mean i don't mind seeing olivia if she's like by herself but like i don't know why we have to have her like family members in there like when we had nathan last season and i'm I'm like why are you guys talking to him if he's homophobic and all this stuff like it doesn't make any sense so i don't know they're all of it's kind of weird and i just want more authenticity from olivia like i'd like to see her photography business Mm -hmm. how she's making all this money if she's dating i'd like to see how she's dating who she's dating i'd I'd like to to see maybe we're gonna get some more of that although i think i saw olivia in an interview it might have been with pink shade in which she says that we might see the guy she's currently dating toward the end of the show Mm -hmm. and so that's going to be something that we'll have to wait for i don't know what she's going to be doing for the rest of the season other than like talking to ethan negotiating their divorce Mm -hmm. and reacting to that i don't i don't know what her storyline is going to be i don't know either and a lot of people are criticizing why she's even on the show like everybody's like like me being like why are you talking about yourself (laughs) (laughs) well there's a lot of people on instagram that are like get off my TV. Like you're so boring. And they're a lot more mean than I am. But I guess Olivia went on a podcast like just yesterday. And she said that the only reason why she's on season six was because her TLC contract dictated that she was. So apparently she couldn't get out of the contract or something. But I'm like, I feel like you wanted to be on TV. Well, somebody else on Reddit said that it's an an actual condition of the show that Olivia be a part of it. Like when they were shopping the show, I think Olivia was helping Kim to do that because it was Kim's vision for the family to to get a show like the Duggars or like Mm. John and 8 plus Mm -hmm, Kate. mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, But when they wrote up the contracts and when they wrote up the deal for the show, it was imperative that Olivia be a part of it because perhaps Mm. at the time she was already starting to dissent in the family. And that was kind of the dynamic that TLC wanted to explore. And quite frankly, that's the dynamic that I want to explore is this deconstruction of fundamentalism, this deconstruction of faith as it affects all of them because Mariah went through her version of it and now Mm -hmm. she's reconstructing it. And that's interesting. I don't agree with it necessarily, but I want to know more about that piece of it I want to get into Lydia Plath Mm -hmm. and what she's doing and how she's feeling because now she's talking about going to college and I'm like are you talking about a liberal arts college oh my god because who's Lydia gonna be after four years that's interesting to me it most interesting however would be to be fucking real with Kim Plath because Kim was the mama Mm -hmm. who visited all of this religious bullshit and so did Barry mm-hmm. onto these children she's the one that actually administered it and now she here now here she is as a criminal <laughs> somebody who's had a DUI yeah. now she's yeah. drinking now she's a legit legal uh, not legal but like spiritually legal adulterer totally yeah that's an interesting storyline to me like let's talk to Kim about that but Olivia said in another interview like that they are absolutely gagged they can't talk about the DUI they can't talk about any of that stuff And maybe that's a condition of Kim's contract. I don't know. But if I'm production, I'm like, that's the story. That's the juicy stuff. That's the good stuff. stuff. And now you're going to make us get our fucking monocles out and with our fake psychic intuition, figure out what's really happening in this family. No shit. And fill the episode with stupid stuff like going to a bar in Scottsdale or even like 
Barry and the boys going to the gym. I mean, that was cool. But it was like, cute. It's still filler, though. You know, like yeah. I want some of the juicy drama llama stuff. And then the only other thing that came out of Olivia and Lydia Grace, like this was her, her last night in Arizona, and they go on a hike and watch the sunset. And Olivia's talking about how she's not really excited to go back to Minnesota and deal with Ethan's bitch ass. And calls him unpredictable which i thought was interesting because kim said he was unpredictable later in the episode mm. so i just think it's interesting how they're both using the same like terminology to describe him. how do you think they mean it like they don't expect him to be emotional and then he gets emotional but he gets emotional because he bottles everything up to the point where it explodes and then he can't help but just unleash it all right and they can't really determine where he is in the process of emotional repression and right. or explosion so yeah. they're like we don't know what ethan's gonna do like when olivia in the first episode of this season pops in on him as a surprise and he gets pissed yes he slams his hands down on the chair he's angry about it so that's probably some of that unpredictability yes agreed and then after Scottsdale, we head on over to the gym with the bros, and it's Barry, Micah, Isaac, who's so handsome. Oh my god, yeah, so handsome! <laughs> if I were only three years younger. <laughs> three years oh my younger. god, I would totally be sliding into his. Does he have DMs? Is he on Probably. Instagram? I would be sliding into no DM girl, like on Milf Manor. Yes. <laughs> he should be on Milf. Manor. Yes, that would be perfect. <laughs> it would be great. Oh my god, he's so cute. He is so handsome. So we got Micah, Isaac uh barry ethan and, and ethan. barry yeah and they all go in in the conga line to the gym and they're all fucking jacked especially barry freaking bench pressing 90 pound dumbbell i'm like bro yeah that's badass 55 year old man uh, that's so awesome and his own sons can't do the same i know yeah that so was good. great micah tried I know. but he couldn't do it and he got all offended by it yeah. too insecure but i'm like this is great. I thought I like that they were bonding. People said this was super cringe mm. with them flexing in the mirror and stuff. Which and I, mean, I can see how like some people might have yeah. secondhand embarrassment. Yeah. But when you look at it from a little bit of a meta position and you look at Barry and you look at the history of this family and how they're all coming together, the boys for Barry bonding with Barry. It's also it's also very wholesome. Yeah, I, I thought it was so actually kind of sweet. I liked it too. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Mariah and Lydia going through Mariah's crazy closet. Yeah. And getting rid of her clothes. And this was cool because I think this is like the first time we've seen Lydia on the season so far, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And she looks gorge. She looks beautiful. And I was wondering what looked different about her. Mm -hmm. And then there's a flashback where Lydia's talking about a boy that she was dating last year. And I noticed that her eyebrows in mm -hmm. the flashback were quite a bit lighter yeah and so she's rocking a darker brow love it she's got some darker eyeliner that's applied well unlike her mother kim which oh we'll god, get to when we get to the marina oh my god <laughs> but like she's really strikingly beautiful yeah all these children it's it's crazy i know I'm not, I'm, I'm stop right well, <laughs> all of these children mean? all of these children are beautiful yes i agree 100 percent. and she's just got back from her mission trip where she was traveling the country for jesus and she was traveling all over everywhere we see a montage she's like it was so much fun i've got the travel bug and she talks about her boyfriend that I thought we were going to meet on this season. Was it Max? I don't know. <laughs> we saw wasn't. the back of his head. And yeah. that's all we get. Because he broke her heart. He was a man of God. Ew. Ew. He's probably 19. He's not even a man. <laughs> he's certainly not a man of God. As soon as For he real. gets a little bit of that punani, he's going to be like every other man out there, Lydia. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the real world. So I'm sad that we didn't get to meet her special man. Um, and then it's Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, now it's Jesus. <laughs> it's been Jesus yeah. the whole time. The number one man. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're talking about getting rid of some of Mariah's skimpy clothing because Mariah's like, I'm grown out of this. I'm a mature lady now and I want to be more modest. And she doesn't say any of those things. <laughs> she says, this basically, she says, this is about. what you are inferring, which is, uh, I think, where the conversation could go. And I think we should get into it because she does refer to wanting to get rid of some of the clothes that 16 year old mariah wore mm -hmm. very skimpy lots of straps little you know patches of cloth uh, coochie cutters across the coochie coochie mm -hmm. cutters and so now obviously she's of a different mindset mm -hmm. and i'm wondering 
Do you think that this is connected to her newfound faith? Do you think this is because maybe she's becoming self-aware like AI? <laughs> is she becoming sentient and yeah. realizes how ridiculous that all was? Why do you think this is happening? Oh, I get that because she um, posted on Instagram saying that that's why she's doing it is for God. Oh, okay. She well, wants I didn't to, know that. Yeah, sorry. I should have added the context. Okay. <laughs> I'm just talking out my big ass. Okay. Um, no, she went on Instagram a couple weeks ago. I think it was a video she posted or something where she's like, yeah, I've just realized that I wasn't dressing for God. And so now I want to dress oh, more for God, God and stop. dress more modestly. And she got a lot of hate for it. Um, and she's like, well, you guys just don't understand my journey as a forgiven rebel. So uh, like, just shut up. So that's basically why I'm saying this. Like she's getting rid of her skim- skimpy clothing. Okay. She wants to be more modest because she wants to be a woman of God. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's interesting that that is how she is explaining it to me. That's what I intuited. Yeah. That's why she was doing it and wearing like a yellow realtor blazer in her <laughs> just like Olivia <laughs> with a bun on her head. Like yeah. she's really kind of changed over the years. Um, And I, you know, I don't really want to criticize her for dressing modestly. I think that that's absolutely her choice. I just worry about her because she goes gung ho into things and she doesn't really think about it. Like she just moved the fuck out of the house. She didn't really say goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, she got all of these tattoos on her body. And a lot of that work is not very good. And now it's on your body for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And just she kind of changes herself very sweepingly frequently yeah but maybe that's because she's a kid that's what she's gonna do i kind of like her now though me too she seems a bit calmed down Mm -hmm. much more respectful much more open to other people's opinions not just her own she was very self-absorbed totally as a young woman and so she seems to be coming out of that which i applaud Mm -hmm. i know in this scene with lydia they talk about potentially going to college together like they're both considering getting an education and this is going to launch me into another freaked out tangent um, and a reiteration because I've already screamed about this on the internet before which is like this is the biggest offense that I hold against Kim and Barry. Barry doesn't get off scot-free. Barry has his fucking master's degree. Mm -hmm. He went to college. He got his master's. Yeah. Kim went to college. I assume she got her bachelor's or whatever. And then we see Kim a few seasons ago actively discouraging Mariah from going to college because she doesn't want her to be, I don't know, in a liberal arts situation. Brainwashed. Opened to diverse thoughts. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want mariah to go into debt and she thinks it's a big scam and i'm just like oh my god you guys get the benefit of having this great education and now barry you have this wonderful job that provides you multiple properties multiple streams of income and yet you've hobbled your kids with no education don't even help them to get a fucking ged right ethan doesn't know how to use an atm two seasons last season yeah two seasons ago doesn't know how to use an atm or read a menu honey like that part about it pisses me off so bad and I will never forgive Barry for it. And you can sit there, you know, with your kids as they're playing their guitars and you can feel so good in that moment. But look at your adult kids and what they do not have in this moment because you did not equip them for the real world. Right. And you didn't even allow them the choice. Like it's like it's one thing to sit there and say from your experience as a parent, like, look, I went to college, but now I think it's bullshit, but you can choose to go if you want. Uh, maybe I don't want to pay for it, whatever you need to figure out. Your That's kind of like how I grew up. Like my family was like, it was an expectation for me to go to college, but they also gave me the option to not go and they didn't judge me for it. And I have siblings who didn't go and they were like, whatever. My parents didn't talk down about it, though. They didn't sit there and be like, oh, college is a piece of shit scam. Like, you shouldn't go and discouraged us from making the choice. Like, we had the choice. So that's where I'm annoyed with Kim and Barry for that because Mm -hmm. they just discouraged them from even going down that route because they thought it was a waste of time. Like, they get to reap all the benefits of that, Mm -hmm. but they don't pass that down to your children. Like, you want your children to have better than you ever had. And now look at Micah. Mm -hmm. He's digging trenches and building fences and basically sucking up to his new controlling Kim 2.0 woman. Look at Ethan. He's a mechanic. He can work on cars and he can farm, I guess. But what else can he do? Right. Look at Lydia. I mean, I'm happy you're into Jesus and everything, but like, what kind of skill set do you have to get out there and get a job that can provide for you in this economy 2024 and Mariah I know you love to sing honey and I realize nobody has ever disabused any of these children of their talent 
Uh, I'm here to do it. (laughs) But like, that's, it's not going to take you anywhere. It's like your dad telling you when you're nine years old, you're never going to be a star, Beatrice. (laughs) Ever. (laughs) It's never going to work out. Like fucking hit the books. For real. (laughs) Jesus. I just, it makes me so upset because these kids are so crippled in Mm -hmm. this economy and they don't really have resources to get something started other than Micah being a model or being an actor or television. But how long is this going to last? Right, exactly. How many more seasons of Plowfill are there going to be? And there's a lot of people that are calling for like the cancellation of the show because they think this entire season is boring. I can't relate. I think it's great. I think it's great too. And we're (laughs) only on episode three. I know. I'm like, calm calm down. down. (laughs) Don't you watch Sister Wives? We're on episode (laughs) 500 and the season 500. Like unless they get to have 18 seasons seasons like you can't depend on this show forever so i don't know it'll be interesting to see if they do choose to go to college i'd love to know what lydia plath's gonna major in can i ask you a question huh so what's happening with the education of the three littles amber cassia and mercy because they're 50 50 with kim and barry kim used to make lydia homeschool them and now lydia's traveling she's an adult yeah um barry works full time i imagine kim is spending all of her time that she can with ken palmer Mm -hmm. and a bottle of vodka Mm -hmm. so are those kids in public school I don't like, know. Like, where are those kids right now? Does anybody know? Is uh, Do they have maybe a tutor? Or is Amber now the one in charge oh of administering Teaching them. homeschooling? Well, I think last season they were still doing the homeschooling. Like, Kim w- said she was doing it and Lydia was helping her with it. But now that Lydia's out of the house, like, what is... Like, What's is Kim on teaching them kids? on the houseboat? <laughs> like, are we at least putting them in school now that we realize this has all been a sham and you you can't even live this life? So are you now helping these young children to get an education? Because somehow I doubt it. Somehow I think they're administering their own homeschooling and nobody's going to help them even get a GED. Big yikes. Terrible. I'd love to hear more about shame. that, though. Shame. For shame. Shame. God. And then speaking of Kim Plath, we have the eldest kid's uh, Ethan, Micah, and Mariah driving down to Florida because contain it's... Contain yourself. What? I'm not contain saying nothing. Contain yourself. I'm not saying anything yet. Okay. Ethan, Micah, and Mariah are driving down to Florida because it's Ethan's like last day or whatever in town before he goes back to Minnesota. Did you notice how Lydia didn't go? Yeah, Lydia did not go. Did you notice how Isaac didn't go? Mm-hmm. Isaac was maybe flying a plane or something. Well, maybe they see the littles more so it's not like that big of a deal. Maybe. I don't know. But they go down to Florida because they want to see the littles and therefore they have to see Kim and Ethan is a little weird about it he's like it's the first time I'm gonna see my mom in like two years I don't really know what to expect because we didn't really leave things on good terms last time and we flash back to their I think it was like not last season but the season prior where he's having ice cream with her or something and he's like straight up popping off on her and telling her she's a bad fucking mom. She's a piece of shit, basically. And do you have any remorse? And And then she just sits there and says nothing. If I recall correctly, she's just like, well, I did the best that I could with what I had at the time. Bitch ass. Such a lame excuse. So anyway, this whole drive up there is intense. Mm -hmm. I could feel the anxiety on Ethan just driving down there and like not really knowing what to expect, but he's going down because he wants to see his little siblings which I thought was cool because I feel like Ethan two seasons ago would not have done something like that. Um, And he he doesn't know what to expect with Kim's houseboat. And then they arrive at the marina. They do. And Kim is very nervous. Very nervous. And she doesn't know how Ethan is going to receive her. And here again, she refers to Ethan as unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So Ethan gets out of the vehicle, immediately starts hugging the little girls, and then he goes in to hug Kim, and Kim immediately gets emotional, which I found to be interesting because Ethan tells the camera that Kim really wasn't emotional and wasn't affectionate as a mother. Mm -hmm. She wasn't like other moms in that way growing up. So for her to have like such an emotional response that she would cry, maybe that's meaningful. Maybe it's just narc performance but maybe it's meaningful. I thought it was meaningful. I actually kind of got emotional during this whole scene and I'm going to go uncensored for a little bit. Mm. We'll go back to the regular pod. And you were saying that um, you're hopeful that Kim can build a bridge, figure it out, connect with Ethan. Yeah. It seems like her emotional response to it, his hug was like it took her off guard and she's like well there I know there's a lot of things that we still need to talk about 
But for right now, I'm going to take what I can get. And I'm just Mm -hmm. like happy that I could even get that from him because she was expecting like a handshake Mm -hmm. or like not even anything. One thing that kind of disturbed me about this particular scene was how she put so much of the interaction on Ethan without taking responsibility for the awkwardness herself. Like the reason that your son has all of these issues with you, the reason that your son has not seen you for Mm -hmm. two years is because he considers you to have done a terrible job being Mm. his mother and there's a lot of wounds there like so instead of saying well I just don't know whether Ethan's going to be unpredictable we just never know what to expect I might have also said like look there's been a lot that has happened between Ethan and I I've done a lot of things wrong Mm -hmm. you know I really hope that this is an opportunity for us to just begin the journey of coming back together and coming into sort of a new understanding like I would have just wanted to hear some of that maternal nurturing language but I think Ethan tells it to us when he says that she's just not like that and that's I guess it's not surprising because I haven't seen a lot of affection from Kim but I have seen her over the seasons try in her own way like when she bought or brought that big ass boat over to their house as a housewarming present. Right. Whether she made attempts to show up and they were awkward. Mm -hmm. Like I can see that it doesn't come naturally to her, but I think the capacity is there because Ethan calls it out. He's like, I don't even know if my mother is capable of having a relationship with me, but if it's possible, I would like to have one with her. Yeah. I thought that was wonderful. I thought that was so great. And again, I relate to him on that a lot. And like, There comes a point in time when you grow up as like a child, you like realize your parents kind of have these limitations about them because of their own experiences and like how they grew up and what they dealt with from their fucked up parents. And so like you learn as an adult, like, okay, I have to kind of take what I can get from my family, like and accept that this is what they're capable of giving me. And while that may not be like completely satisfying, it's still like, okay, my parents are human beings and that's just all that they're capable of doing. So Mm -hmm. I liked that he showed a little bit of that insight and like related it back to himself when he was talking about how it's so difficult for him to be vulnerable and how he thinks he learns that from Kim because she doesn't know how to really be vulnerable and maybe doesn't even know how to feel those big emotions. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. And then with regards to Kim not really taking any accountability for the awkwardness, I think that just shows how like emotionally stunted and immature she is because of her own crap. Like she's a traumatized woman and she's obviously going through a midlife crisis and eating a lot of sugar. So it's going to her brain. (laughs) You know what I mean? No, like, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but to me, Kim doesn't get a pass because I come from a very traumatized situation and I'm not going to compare uh, trauma, but like it was really fucking acute, but I spent many years going to therapy and working on myself and learning how to communicate in a way that another person can receive and learning how to demonstrate the love that I feel for people and work on relationships like those are not necessarily skills that are innate to us to most of us like we have to learn how to be in relationships with other people Mm -hmm. and I don't see any of that self starting like how can I heal my family from Kim I see self absorption from Kim I see I want to spend 90% of my time with Ken Palmer getting drunk and fucking from Kim I'm gonna roll my car because I'm drinking and driving like there's no there is no reason under the sun to do such a thing she's so self-absorbed and driven by her own desires yeah and um it's I I I don't feel great for her relationships with these children as they Mm -hmm. get older because you're talking about Ethan and Kim two profoundly broken people And the origin of Ethan's trauma exists in the other person he's trying to connect with who cannot come to terms with the shit that she's done. I think I said last week, I think she's disassociated all the fucking time. She she seems blank. She seems like she's just kind of there, but mostly her consciousness is somewhere else because can you imagine what it would be like to be Kim Plath with all of her intelligence to sit for a moment in the reality of what you have done. Yeah. Not just like your religious trauma mm-hmm. that you have inflicted on these kids, but like by destroying the family mm-hmm. and being an adulteress and a drunk, like to sit in the reality of that, like would be terribly shameful and awful. Oh, for sure. But the only way out is through. Yeah. And she's not even willing to do that. Like I'm not hearing any accountability from Kim at all. 
Yeah, I mean, and that's a fair criticism. I guess I just look at her like she was also in this fundamentalist cult too, and she was in it young, and then she had 12,000 kids, like back to back to back to back. And then one of them she killed. I mean, that so you know accident. what I mean? But yeah, there's trauma like, that's there's associated with that. There's a lot of trauma with, with that. all of that. But it is incumbent upon her sure. to initiate her own healing process. Mm-hmm. The moment you know you're hurting other people, you got to check yourself and take care of that. When Ethan sits down with her in season four and he says, you hurt me. Like right. you didn't require me to fucking do my homework. I didn't even get a GED. Like you made us think the first person we were attracted to, we had to marry. And that fucked up my whole life. Like, do you have any remorse for that? Yeah. And she's got nothing for him. Yeah. She's got nothing for him. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm sorry, you're 55 or whatever, mm-hmm. Kim. Like, you're old enough, despite your timeline, your childhood, your trauma, to get the help that you need so you stop hurting people. Right. But I don't see her doing that. I see maybe Ethan with some potential to become vulnerable. He seems to recognize that his inability to be vulnerable with Olivia because every time he was they fought because he's expressing himself all of a sudden and now she's got something to work with so they're fighting yeah like that inability to be vulnerable and to communicate is not going to work in another relationship so he's going to have to figure it out so he gets it right he does he realizes my brokenness affected my relationship but I don't get that from Kim I don't get that she realizes that her brokenness has caused all this Well, and like to your point earlier, like to have to sit in the weight of like all of this shit that she fucked up with would be tremendous. Like it would be so hard to have to deal with that and like humble yourself. So I think she just doesn't want to deal with it. That's why she probably drinks. That's Mm -hmm. why she's eating a lot of sugar. That's why why she's, she's, I think that's why she's gaining weight. Totally. Because she doesn't want to deal with it. Like we said last week, the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. But honey, the least you could do is figure out how to apply eyeliner. I mean, I mean, those those interstitials down at the marina, maybe she was crying, but her eyeliner is so freaking smudged, which it always is. It's so freaking so smudged. It's coming down her face. Her lipstick is applied All outside around. of her mouth. And I'm like, Kim! Well, and then she's wearing these fucking mini skirts where she's showing all her ass. And ain't nobody want to see that <laughs> except for maybe Ken Palmer. But like, keep that to yourselves. That's well, so nasty. I think that it's like a sporty squirt or something. Well, I think stop that it. she's just living her best life. Stop and it. I think you should let her be a <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Christ. so now we got to let her live her best life. As well, she's... I mean, whatever. I mean, can we really judge her for yes. being fat? I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can't really judge her for that. I'm not judging her for oh, her I body. I judge her it's when just... she's walking down the dock. I mean. The only obese person with all of these children <laughs> that you raised to not eat sugar super fucking athletic oh my god like the, probably the prime of what physical body should look like at their age and like here you are the only person in this whole family who has probably 70 extra pounds on your body like lady girl well and isn't she like a naturopath or something yes. like isn't she like a yes. natural she got her doctor online degree to be a naturopath That's <laughs> like what right. are you doing so she could probably sell some mlm bullshit probably girl I some don't green know. juice or whatever god uh <laughs> but yeah i thought um ethan when he was talking about his inability to be vulnerable was like super fucking interesting and i loved how he talked about how he wouldn't be able to have these relationships with the littles or kim or the rest of his family because of olivia and now he gets to have the relationships that he sees fit and that his inability to be vulnerable damaged their marriage because he would just become resentful and blow up. But I thought it was interesting how any, he says anytime he became vulnerable, it turned into a fight. So do you think that's because she would take it personally? Like anytime he had big feelings or he was exploding on her and she felt like that was abusive. He might've been explosive in the way that he communicated it and, or he's expressing himself and how he really feels. And this might be the first time Olivia even hears it. Mm. And so she's going to interact with the information that she receives and maybe that makes him defensive and it becomes a fight. So I, I don't, I don't really know. He seems like somebody who's always bottling everything up and doesn't know how to talk at all. Just be a mute already. I mean, just be a mute. Go be a monk. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> just sign it's For fine <laughs> oh god and then the other thing that came out of this whole meet up at the marina was kim showing everybody the houseboat and how she's like oh yeah by the way it doesn't run <laughs> so it just sits here and rots in the marina and it's literally a dump <laughs> And these poor it's girls so have to go there every other week every- for like 50% of the time, Beatrice. I don't even know if they go for every week or if it's like every few days. Well, like- I think in the divorce papers that Barry filed, it was 50-50. So oh, I think that they've terrible. been going down for an entire week. And I think they've been living on that booty ass houseboat that doesn't run. And that's terrible for them. That I feel is bad for so them. horrible. Why? I'm wondering why. Like she can afford to rent a little apartment in wherever Florida that they're living. Like, why would you want the boat? I don't understand. That's why I want to know more about that. I'm like, why would you buy a houseboat? Is it because of your DUI? Like, are you hiding the fact because you lost your car or something? (laughs) I mean, I'm just like, I don't know. (laughs) Somebody said, maybe it was on Reddit or somewhere, that her mother had a houseboat. Well, yeah, she grew up on it. And spent some time on a houseboat. So maybe it's like this unconscious attempt to reconnect to the parts of the trauma that are trying to emerge. To her mom. Or maybe it's just something that she bought so that she could put her kids in there while she goes and boinks Ken Palmer. Girl, I don't know. I don't know either. And then speaking of Ken Palmer, Kim asks the olders if they would like to meet him, which I'm just like, that's a little presumptuous. Indeed. Like, why are you asking in when they indeed. just came down here? Especially Ethan, who hasn't seen you in two years. And I right. love that Ethan was like, mm, not today. Yeah, that's no not going to happen today. Maybe some other time. Yeah. And then to the camera, he's like, he ain't my daddy. He ain't my stepdaddy. He ain't nobody. He ain't my second daddy. Like, absolutely not. I want no part of that, at least not right now. And I don't think any of the older kids do. Like, when Mm-mm. she's asking, when she has the audacity to ask that of Ethan and the other kids, like, Micah just looks down. Mm-hmm. Mariah looks away. None of them want to go and see Ken Palmer. No way. And they don't really know how to fully express how they feel about it, especially on camera. Because I don't think they want to, like disparage their parents on camera because they've already done that enough but i'm like please do it please talk about your whore of a mom like why aren't you talking about it now like mariah micah and ethan you were popping off seasons one through four about kim right and now here she's gone and done something so fucking egregious so over the top with a dui and an adulterous affair and now there's mums the word nothing for like what the fuck that's Uh, wild what are we doing here well but judging by the season preview from the first episode it seems like some of the kids are going to talk about how they don't approve of kim being a hoe with kim palmer so i'm like i hope so please i hope so give it to me and then last but not least after they leave florida and they see the littles they say goodbye blah 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 ethan takes the olders back up to the plath family home and this is where we have the concerts of lydia Mm -hmm. of ethan and then of the three of them yeah Mariah, Lydia, and Ethan singing, singing Keep on the Sunny Side. Well, I mean, I think it goes without saying that I need those girls to stop singing. Please. That nobody wants to hear that. No and one I'm wants really to really happy hear that you want to sing about Jesus, but go do that in the closet upstairs. Mm-mm. Stop it. Stop, Please, stop trying to put your musical family, your musical Christian traveling family on my television. Lydia was singing Celine Dion today on Instagram. The Titanic song? Yes. I saw that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why? Like, stop. stop it. <laughs> Stop right now. <laughs> God bless it. But then yeah. Ethan said, hey, I wrote a song. Do you guys want to hear it? It's and really depressing, though. He sings it and everybody listens. And when I tell you that my cold, dead, <laughs> black heart, like I cried. Yeah, did. I did, too. I cried. I did, too. Because this is a man who does not know how to express himself. And Mm -hmm. Mariah addresses this in the kitchen. She's like, I'm happy that he has this medium with which he can communicate his feelings. It's sad. What I'm hearing is sad, but I'm really happy that he has music. But like what he's saying is that sometimes life just doesn't go your way. Sometimes people turn on you. Sometimes you would rather not be alive. And he's singing this to his sisters and Barry. And he's singing this to Barry. And I'm just wondering from the vantage point and position of Barry, the father, like, how are you feeling hearing these words coming out of your eldest son? I would be personally so heartbroken, 
so concerned, I would probably be immediately mobilized. What can I do? Like this is somewhat of a suicidal song Mm -hmm. about where Ethan is at right now. And um, I felt really sad about it. I felt very sad about it. And I just wish that like Barry or one of the other family members just like went up to Ethan and hugged him in that moment. But like, they're not like a family that does that. Like they're not like super overly affectionate or like, you know, emotional in that regard at all, obviously. So I just, I don't know. I felt for Ethan, but I'm glad that he feels safe enough to do something like that in front of his family. Cause I could never, No, <laughs> I could never, but like, that's why I relate to Ethan a bit because I have my own struggles being vulnerable. I do not like to be yeah. vulnerable and I don't like to be perceived as like emotional or weak. So like, I have a hard time with that. I'd rather just be a hard ass, but then that hurts the people around me because I'm being a dickhead, you know? So like I relate Mm -hmm. to Ethan in that regard because sometimes it is easier to just put on a front and not express yourself because if you do, you might get hurt or you might have somebody reject your feelings or tell you that they're bullshit or whatever. So it's so interesting because you put up this front and, and not just you, but like Ethan here, but the juxtaposition of that is that there is like roiling huge emotions yeah. underneath. And we've said on this podcast before that Ethan is probably quite empathic, Yeah, but he doesn't know. It's obvious to me personally that he's feeling big things in his body. Again, yes. his whole face gets red. You can see how he carries himself in his countenance. Like he is feeling things. He just doesn't know how to connect with it. Yeah. Like once he does, if somebody could teach him, perhaps a therapist, mm-hmm. how to connect to those emotions, how to process them and how to express them and release them to off gas them. Oh my God, I think we're going to have a totally different person. Yeah. It's not that he doesn't feel. It's just he doesn't know how to connect with what he is feeling all the fucking time yeah and i can't fucking imagine how like hard of an existence that would be like no wonder he's singing a fucking song about self-deletion and Mm -hmm. like how depressed he is after this divorce with olivia so like i felt bad for him man but i'm glad that he's like reconnecting with his family and he has this space and like this outlet to be emotionally vulnerable and like learn how to be better for his future relationships. Yeah, but like Barry, this is your family who are clinging to one another in spite of how you parented them, Mm. despite how you parented them. Like you pushed Ethan and Olivia into a marriage together at a very young age, which ended up being pretty traumatizing for Ethan and for Olivia, I dare say. And here he is sitting in the wreckage of his marriage that you pushed him into and had a lot of influence over in those early years, calling his wife fucking demon possessed and all this other bullshit. And here this man is a broken man sitting in your living room. I mean, what are you thinking in this moment about right. how you raised him? I mean, he's obviously a good person. He's Barry? a good... N- no, Ethan. Oh, okay. And Mariah's a good person. Lydia's a good person. They all have their shit. They all have their problems. But these are good people that you've raised. And so you can be proud of that. But like, did you do the best job that you could have done? Mm. I don't know. No. I was just, as a parent, I was sitting in that moment. And how I would feel if my daughter's singing that song into the room, I would just be like, holy fuck. Holy Lee fuck. Yeah. What can I do now to get her the resources that she needs? And also all the incrimination of my parenting previously is what I would be feeling in that moment. Yeah. No, I agree. And maybe he is feeling that or maybe he's not. Maybe he's beep boop bop berry. Yeah. Like he's Does he feel anything? I mean, he's so emotionally repressed. And speaking of which Apparently, Barry was married to somebody else before Kim Plath. Yeah, this is his second marriage. So, he like, was married to someone for like four full years. Why aren't we talking about that? I don't know. Like, so obviously, he was not a good husband twice. <laughs> and, like, he's, I mean, his parenting, it seems like, is getting better now that yes. he's post the divorce like he's trying to be more present it's super for the kids. convenient though right because exactly. it was kim that had to do all of the heavy lifting and or yeah. lydia mm-hmm. and so she was the one who's having all the kids and taking care of all the kids well you just get to leave every day and go to work and come home and your whole family's together and isn't it wonderful well but he had to support a family of 10 i mean that's, that's true still, like a that's lot true. of hard work but he could have done a lot more yeah he could have been more present and communicative yeah and loving and, and expressive right yeah so God, many things family. could have been done differently, but like that's true for all of us. Exactly. So yeah, that's the end of the episode. Okay. And then we have a preview. So we have Mariah and Ethan 
going out and they're talking about Olivia because Mariah Mm -hmm. is feeling remorseful for how she acted towards Olivia and wants to apologize. So she straight up tells Ethan, so I texted her and we're going to meet up. And then we see that they meet up together and Olivia is a little nervous. She's like, I don't know how this is going to go. And I want to see that so bad. Yes, and Olivia is giving herself permission Mm -hmm. to get up and walk out if it's going to be toxic or if it's going to be negative. I personally do not think that it will be. I think Mariah is going into that interaction to ask for forgiveness. I hope so. I think she's in her Christian era, Mm -hmm. and she's going to try and be as humble as possible. And I hope that Olivia comes to that conversation with some apologies of her own because her hands are not clean. Like, she did some shit that wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just hoping these two girls can heal the relationship not necessarily to pick it up and be friends again but like just heal the bad blood and put it behind them i agree and i hope that olivia doesn't show up kind of defensive because historically anytime she had any kind of conversations with any of the plaths she does kind of have a bit of a hard edge to her so hopefully she'll kind of let some of that go because it's mariah Mm -hmm. and they used to be bffs so hopefully she'll be like, okay, yeah, like I accept your apologies, but I'm I'm so looking forward to that. I hope they just don't edge us with that and yeah. we don't get to see that until like season or the episode 10 or something like right. that, you know? Right. I want to see it next week. I think it's happening next week. Please. Yeah. And then we also have Micah going on the houseboat for Kim because she has no idea how any of it works and he's the resident mechanic trying to help get this boat running. Yeah. And she's fucking clueless because yep. she's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's it. Well, I'm looking forward to it, honey. I'm Me definitely too. enjoying this season. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the subreddits, not all of them. The the <sighs> Plathville subreddits are they're kind of on polar opposites of the yes. spectrum. You've got Welcome to Plathville and they are 100% in the cult drinking the Kool-Aid for Olivia. They're horrible. And then you have Welcome to Plath Snark where they are much more critical of Olivia, but there's like reasoned yes. takes and there's some people who like Olivia. Like there's more discussion. Like you can't even discuss Olivia in a critical way Mm -hmm. in the Welcome to Plathville sub. Like, people are into it and invested, and so are we. Uh, So So are we. 100%. If I post in there, I get downvoted so fast. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) So anyway. Now, I understand we have another speak pipe from somebody that called, and I want to hear it, honey. All right. Let me pull it up. So this speak pipe is from Angela, and I think she's giving us a lot of love. She's telling us how great we are. And it's true. We are. We, we are. are so great. Hello, ladies. My name is Angela. I am 53 years old, mother of four, and I am not sensitive. <laughs> Let me start by saying I tried to leave you a message. I got cut off midway, so I guess I have to shorten it up. I am very new to reality TV over the last few years. Went through a lot in my personal life. I figured I'd hop on board with Mindless TV. You too. I just want to say I absolutely, absolutely adore you guys. Make me laugh. I think you guys have a great dynamic together. I love the fact that your mother and daughter-in-law, oh, you make me happy. I look forward to listening to your podcast. I don't know. I've never felt like this before. You guys just have that way about you. Keeps me coming back for more. I love you guys. I really do. Thank you for making my life a lot easier while I'm driving in the car. I think I'm about to join Patreon because that's what I hear. So, you know, the only two I listen to are you guys and Bunny. Bunny XO. Thank you. You have no idea what you do for me. It may sound like I'm a crazy lady, but I promise you I am not. I enjoy your show so much. Thank you. Oh, my you. God. I'm getting verklempt. <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a little bit misty. Yeah. Because, I mean, what we do is clearly ridiculous. It's totally. And, I mean, are we talking about super important global events? No. No, absolutely not. Nor will we ever, by the way. Never. But the fact that we still are able to have conversations that we would be having any fucking way. Yeah. But have them and share them with all these people and that it might make them a little happier in a world that can sometimes be sometimes be pretty dark, pretty toxic. Mm -hmm. That means we have a purpose. I know we do have a purpose. That means we're here for a reason. (laughs) Yeah. And that makes me happy. So thank you. Her name was Angela. Angela. Yeah. She's my new best friend. (laughs) Thank you so much. I already can tell she's beautiful. Yes. Not unlike myself. Gorge. 
thank you so much. That really makes me feel good in my heart ball. Same. We appreciate you so much. All right. Before we get on out of here, Beatrice, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod so we can get famous. Thank you very much. We will be back next week, Monday, specifically, unless you're on Patreon, honey, because it comes out on Sunday Uh. on Patreon. But we'll be back to talk Sister Wives Rewind. We are in Scotts in season five and having a great time. Mm -hmm. So make sure to come back for that. But until then... Please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.